I'd also like to say to see what you guys think about this matchup, as we'll remind you that uh, with the community vote, we have this right before every single one of our matchups. So you guys get to vote and let us know what you think in this one. 86% for Rogue. Not surprising at all. Let's be honest, the winners of USN, to some extent, fairly convincingly. Yeah, sure, they had a tough time against Space Station, but it's Space Station. You are going to have a tough time against them, especially on land. Um, but here, this is not surprising at all. Yeah, it's been interesting how the community vote has been getting more accurate over time. It's wisdom of the crowds, right? Uh, all right, well, we'll see how this one goes as we are ready to head into the game again. Uh, again, Bank will be our uh, map for this best of one series. So we're going to load in in just a second. I'm very excited for Bank. I think Bank is a map that went from not being played at all to being a pretty big staple. I remember when you and I first cast together, literally our first ever cast, Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. It's, it certainly has. It's been point. a trek soon. In, in just a few months, we'll be celebrating our second anniversary. Maybe finally you'll pop the question, but hey, I'll leave it for later. The question will be, which question? <laughs> How do these holes work? Well, both <laughs> ways. Of course. <laughs> well, that back in those days when flip side tactics were a thing, it was definitely a good map for them. I mean, we, it still yeah. is, to be fair. And we were thinking, hey, finally somebody played Bank that's not Latin America or Flipside. Yeah. Well, things have changed, and Bank is a big staple in uh, in play here in Pro League. So, so would you say Bank has seen a lot of interest? I hate you. We only got to do something during the uh, pick band phase here. Well, Glass is going to get removed. Habana, nothing surprising at all by the Habana band. Maybe the Echo or the Mira. There we go. Mira will get removed. Usually it's either the Maestro or the Echo. Rarely both, just because of how much uh, Mira can bring to the table, especially on this map. But still, it's a pretty darn standard uh, band phase here. Nonetheless, we'll start off on round number one, of course. And that'll be Rogue here on the attacking side. They'll bring Maverick. And the Thermite, nothing really out in the ordinary because you really need uh, to have both Heart Breachers. Now, you might think, oh, Maverick is only good to open up a few holes and, like, maybe have some sort of hole into a breach, into a, into a hatch. But no, Maverick actually, with his charges, has enough charges. If you play it correctly, you can take down a hatch with two and a half charges. And sometimes a bit less, even. It's just two and a half, two and three quarters. Need to locate which means you can open up a hatch and can. still have enough to either open up another one or at least give you something to play with. It's not just that, but it's also not, as the developers like to say, non-binary. In the sense that as you're opening up that hatch, you also get visibility down. Can, take, can try and stop anyone who might be able to try play against you opening that hatch in a way. I mean, could also get you killed, as it often does with Maverick. But, you know, because those holes work... Both ways. Bi-directionally. <laughs> but it, it, I just mean it's it's something that plays out a little bit different in the way that you open the hatch. Yeah, they're fairly binary. Yes. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. All right, now that we've played that out. One thing that I think is interesting is seeing Slash play on Thermite. Five oh, yeah. Seconds this, I mean, I, I, it's not to say that we haven't seen him play that role, but it's just... I don't know, I don't feel Attackers like that is a common role for him to play, but Attackers with another new player on the team, I feel like roles have kind of shifted a little bit more. I mean, they've, they've tended to shift over time since this is a team that goes all the way back to the beginning. Essentially, I mean, not the same players necessarily, but going back to the beginning of Pro League. So, you know, things shift over time. And in this case, even with the only one roster change here, it's still going to be, oh, well, let's shift who's doing what, because everyone kind of has their own unique strengths that they bring to a team when they join it. Sometimes that shifts other people around. And of course, uh, just... Uh there's nothing really to take away from Rogue. It's, they they have been playing excellently, even with their poor performance in Rio. But again, this is one of the best teams in the world, and they see the problem when they when they lose. They see the problem and they try to fix it. It's similar thing to uh, Evil Geniuses. So, who didn't have any better of a performance in Rio? To be fair, it's very true. All right, well, APAC is the way. That's for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, you will not be seeing that on this channel during the season. Yes, remind you that all these matches like for, for the APAC region are still on R6 A and Z, so we don't mention them enough. Yeah, really, you should you should just be following that Twitch so we don't have to remind you. Yes. Because uh, those are definitely a lot of games. I mean, there's more teams in that one quote-unquote region than all of the three regions combined, so. All right, well, there you go. Eclipse will move in, and they have spotted things out. Um, in the open area. I'm not sure if he's going to run the logic bomb here to try and move in. Certainly seems scared to do so, just because of the angle. 
Yeah, you can see that's an SMG 11 oh, toning down, and Eclipse will find it. Yeti will go down here. The uh, Castle, unfortunately, can't really do much against the SMG-12, even with the nerf of the SMG-12, and Crazy instantly shot down Eclipse with yet another. My man will go down, and this leaves only two available. Orglis tried to play roam, pl roaming upstairs, but... Attackers have located a bomb. Unfortunately, that's... You're running a pulse. Why do you have to do that? The pulse literally just negates any of that. Well, you know, it's just the first round. Just let him, just let him try things. Oh like man! Experiment. They have two new people to play with. Bomb located by yeah, Well, the thermite is going to open up the wall, and Acid will finally fall back here onto the site. And he does have a nitro cell in hand, but calls have come in from the Dokabi. And Brian has started using his smokes as well. 36 seconds on the clock. A ton of time here for Rogue to play with. And well, there you go. They're going to exhaust all the smokes. That's the last one. Brian just shot it out. It's all in that C4 now. Yeah, no, C4 is going to get used, and even if it does kill a player, which it won't, it just will do damage. It should be a plant to be. Acid will try to peek in, but Vertical is ready, and Vertical will take him out. A plant should be going down, and there you go. Instantly set in by Rogue. Brian will try to move in. Remember, Rogue has not lost a single player this whole round, and there you go. They will clean it up with a clean five men alive. Rogue just absolutely reading into Orglis. Figuring out their opponents instantly. Drones, information, kills. That's Beautiful very, efficiency. Very well coordinated. Yeah. <clears throat> Something I also forgot to mention since I've mentioned it the last two matches, we have another Obey player playing on here. So, you know, we're slowly spreading them out like spores across the other teams here. Is now we've got my man, formerly from Obey, who is playing on Orglis. So we didn't get a chance to mention it during the roster part. So it was good to see him managing to float over. And Brian was formerly on SSG before. We'll see. They're going to try Locker CCTV again. At least they have some idea how Rogue we're going to play it. So they should have some ability to try and counter that. A little bit smarter, as you mentioned, Defenders the way they were playing the Roamers probably wasn't the most attackers. efficient way to do things. They do have cameras here as they are bringing Valkyrie you know, with Crazy. So they should be able to take advantage of that a little bit along with the Harpy sensor to have a better idea of what's coming at them rather than trying to play so aggressively upstairs. We'll see if that pays off for them. And at least maybe making it not a 5v0 at the Camera end of the round. Activated. Managing to hopefully pick off at least one rogue attacker before they get destroyed, if that happens again similar to the last round. I like the idea with that hole there, the way they kind of held the angle on it a little bit, but they just didn't end up winning the gunfights they needed to. We'll see, though. If they are opening that, it does make me think they are likely to have at least some people playing upstairs. Now, they are again bringing the Jackal, and the Jackal, of course, helps negate a little bit of that roam play. So, again, just kind of moving the... Uh, we just Attackers takes out those drones quick, but it, is, it does somewhat negate uh, the usefulness of playing Rome when you have your footprints so well tracked. We'll see Crazy kind of running all over the map. It's going to be leaving footprints pretty much everywhere, almost guaranteeing he gets tracked at some point. Yeah, well, at least you're going to have some information, at least with Yeti and Acid. Uh, remember, you're running the pulse. It gives you a lot of info here. And oh, Mew Jam right here, uh, jamming the Inox for just a bit, I guess. Yeah, it will kind of make Jackal's yeah. life slightly harder. I don't know if it completely, like, doesn't allow him to use it, though. No, just just kind of annoying, if anything. Just a, you know, disincentive to run it too long. All right. Well, the, the wall is left soft and at least destroyed. And uh, it really looks like this is the big thing here for Orglis. They're trying to play strategy that doesn't get played a lot. And I want to say for a very good reason. Just because, oh, you're playing in the basement, you know, it's, it's got a fairly one-dimensional, and there you go. Shuttle just hits it, and Crazy will go down. You lose the Valkyrie, but at least the uh, the cameras have been set up. Torches a go! Yeah, still getting some utility. There you go, mentioning about uh, using the Maverick Blowtorch to take out the hatches, and that's exactly what he's doing. Going to be trying to do it in the most fuel-efficient way possible since they have that top floor control. Uh, Yeti just uh, looking down in as the Doki be, might be going for a call, and there you go. Call in. They'll know where Yeti is, and he'll have to take his phone out for just a second. In the meantime, he'll get spotted, but at least we'll be able to survive and fall back on the site. There you go. You you are fairly efficient here. There's a lot of time that was lost by Rogue. We're able to really get on the site just yet. And you, for that, you'll lose the Valkyrie. 
Odin. It's it's a loss, but still not super huge for you on a time. Unfortunately, they gave away the camps. Some of those are not going to be destroyable. Necessarily like the lobby one, for example, if that wasn't already taken out. Now they have the opportunity to use that to kind of watch for some flank potential. You know, say what you want about what Yeti was doing, but he's certainly making life very annoying for Eclipse upstairs, uh, despite leaving. Right, easily droning in here as 50 seconds are left on the clock. Not sure Slash has uh, one exothermic charge. There you go. He still has one. He's going to try to use it here on the reinforced wall. They don't have the second one, but they do have a Maverick, so it should allow uh, Rogue to have an extra line of sight if they wish to use it to their advantage. No, Shuttle's just going to be playing upstairs, uh, just watching the staircase from the Teller's area. He still has one charge and a bullet torch available. And Acid, in the meantime, is just checking through the gold vault. It's a great uh, positioning uh, for the defensive side of Orglis. You can see nitro cells abound, at least two of them here available. My man will try to play one, but he's going to watch the hatch up top. Smokes, flashes, and calls are going in. And vertical is now on the side. He'll spray right into the back and find one easily with the second. But the peek from my man and Brian will make it happen. 3v2, C4 thrown out, but it's not enough to clean it. My man is not able to shoot down the fuse plant. As Brian will get one on the slash, and my man will blast shuttle out of the map. Still easily alive here. Can he clutch the round? So one entryway, but the shotgun is more than enough to destroy the side of the soft wall. He sprays right in, but my man clutches it. And the headshot right in to easily go back down to the table that the fuser. Brian down on the floor and my man on 23 HP. All that he needed there to save the round. Definitely a much, much better round for Argus that time. Part of that due to the fact that, well, they only lost one upstairs and then bailed. They had a lot more utility downstairs. You saw Brian much better metering out the smokes that time. He had two in hand when he called about the, the two C4s that they also had. So just much, much better in that sense. The flank from shuttle was nice, but just missing too many shots through the bars definitely cost him. Not to mention the shotgun doing a good job of countering that. It just, the timing wasn't there as efficiently for Rogue, and it definitely... Did not work out as well. I mean, I like the fact that they took advantage of the phone left upstairs as well. But they did uh, Valkyrie of Crazy, but just, I don't know, didn't seem to work out as well. Shuttle, though, going to change things up slightly. So we'll see if that works out for them as they know that now that they've, you know, the, the they don't have to deal with the base things more. Now they can safely play they something can. else besides Maverick if they don't have to worry about hatches as much as they know open area is less likely to be played by many teams as well as just a very difficult bomb site to defend. And there's not so many hatches they have to deal with really over top of the uh, archive site here. So it's a little more predictable to say, hey, hatches aren't so much the concern. Still want to bring Thermite because he's still extremely useful yes. on the bomb site. So you really need him. Gives him a chance to make those adaptations. So smart calls there in terms of making that happen. Otherwise, most of the rest of the lineup has pretty much stayed the same. So just, you know, make the changes where you need to. And Rogue is definitely one of those teams that stays somewhat consistent on attacker lineups until they feel like they need to make changes. Yeah, and really, the big part here for Rogue, in my opinion, is at least that Zofia change. You know, Attackers the ability to stunlock your opponents. Attackers Even with the fact that Zofia only now has two charges, uh, the Schmotz, instead of the three and or that the four. Still, it's an operator that Shuttle has played very well. In the past. Exactly, and she is still a great operator. She still offers so much to the team. Obviously, the big downside compared to Ash is that, yeah, you don't get as many flashes, but you can control everything much easier with the fact that, you know, you're literally using a grenade launcher for it, um, and you lose out on the speed. Otherwise, she just is a side grade, and that's exactly where she should be. Oh, great spot here on the Yokai. Of course, IQ spotting things around. You'll be able to destroy one huge bit of. Uh, Utility and a big asset for Orglis. And the yeah, Yokai. definitely. Good teamwork here from Eclipse and easily. All right, and they still need to con take control of the top floor here. As, uh, my man is set in. This is an attack on the towers, so you still need some control over the top. And having shuttle and vertical on here, even easily with uh, possibly any um, any charge breaching charges, should be more than enough to destroy the floorboard. And just well, look on down. Not to, you might were talking about the uh, concussions from uh, Shuttle being less, but the fact that he's got two uh, the explosives to be able to take out those castle barricades is definitely going to help on this attack. Exactly. And here, Jackal Soul droning on in. He'll spot the Legion in the back. That is definitely something that you cannot miss. We'll get an extra spot oh. on him. The C4 will miss there as Yeti will just jump right into the elevator. Okay, he's down to half health. 
A vertical has taken control in the meantime of the janitor closet. There's a player in the back. The Goomander will get spotted. Should get destroyed here, but they'll analyze and they'll find the lesion. Who's in the back getting shot from uh, the side as Vertical will try to engage against the castle. My man will actually win it out as it's the rotational Vertical. What are you what are you doing there? So he'll finally go down and ask what was Vertical doing? I think he was just hoping that he could stay in that position and avoid those shots and he just they managed to test him out, but at least good trades coming out as 2v2. Alright, Shuttle and Slash still alive. Arguably the two operators that are very much necessary for this attack here from Rogue. Uh, there's 38 seconds left on the clock. Will anybody peek? Uh, that is to be seen. Slash, he can put a Thermite Charge if he wants to, but the wall is still, oh no, no, it is not soft. So there you go, it's the standard. Some teams, like back in the day with C9, they would have the main uh, teller's wall completely soft yeah. just in case they want to deal with their opponents, even sometimes completely destroying it. But there's no more charges available here for that Zofia and Slash will have to slide his way into the set and hit the barbed wire at the on the edge of it. Fight against the smoke up close and he'll win it and shuttle from above will finish him off and Crazy will go down. Rogue will take round number three by just a hair. Little to no time left. That was definitely very close. Slash even winning that gunfight was... That was... Probably shouldn't have won that yes. gunfight, let's be honest. But had he been on the shotgun on the smoke, that definitely would have made a difference. He would have been able to win that fight much easier. But, hey, you know, sometimes when you know you've got enough bullets to be able to get the kill, you can just start spraying as you come around the corner like that. And just smart on him to know, you know what, now's the time to crawl on in. Shuttle's going to cover my back. And that's exactly what they did. Great teamwork. And, uh, you know, I was talking about this before. It's just vertical was kind of new at USN, and they still managed to win with him. Yeah. Now that they've had more time to practice, this team is just... From what we've seen so far, seems to be gelling very well. Now, you question what Vertical is doing upstairs, and I gotta imagine he was probably hearing different calls coming out, was trying to decide what to do. He knew that there was people on either side of him potentially that could that could fire on him if he moved. So it's just a case where he's like, you know what, I'm not sure what to do here. I'm gonna hold position and hope they don't catch me out. Didn't work though, to be fair. But okay. At the same time, you know, this is still coordinated. This is a real interesting site. Uh, Rogue has been one of the teams to go down to the uh, through the open area. Orgo sometimes will do that, and in this case, will indeed. So, it was just to see how the setup will go, especially with no Mira being available. And uh, as we were talking about earlier, no Hatch Breacher in this case, because had they known this to be the site, obviously they would bring Maverick, because you do definitely want to open up those hatches, because there's three yeah, good hatches to use yeah. here. Yep. So you want as many of those as open as possible, but in this Five case, uh, to they're go. just going to have to do it the hard way. Although they still can use a exothermic charge to open a hatch. Probably don't want to open two because you very often want to open up the big old wall into kitchen, but you never know. They might want to play it a different way, a lot more top down. So we'll see what they end up doing. They definitely know that that's the bomb site by now. Just a question of how they're going to adapt to play against it and whether or not it was something that they expected as a possibility. Now they will have the uh, mute again, but this time crazy. Not going to be playing for cameras or anything like that. It's going to be playing for the pulse. So we'll see whether or not he's going to be hanging out downstairs. It looks like at the moment you can kind of potentially see him, I think, inside the uh, tellers. I'm not sure if that was him or not. Couldn't tell by the silhouette Attackers from above. Now you see crazy was running down some stairs there. He is going to get spotted on his own teammate's camera. So that's not good. There you go. Vertical is in. So far, it's not spotted anybody. Janitor, of course, the hatch is reinforced as well as the hallway. So there's not really much that you can do. And you mentioned, you know, the Maverick would have been a great operator to have Bomb in here. And of course, the, the main hatch to reinforce in this situation is the one in, in trading. And it very much is reinforced. So all three hatches will give pretty much no line of sight for rental of sight here for Rogue. They'll have to decide on where to use the two exothermic charges yeah. because one of them should definitely be going on the main big wall. Yeah. And from Skylight into the, the the kitchen area. But the second one is kind of the flexible part of it. The big plus, though, is that bringing the Jackal, they do have the IT to be able to open up some of the floor in stock or elsewhere to be able to get some line of sight down. And so that will help a little bit, but we only just had one go off there. And there we go. Crazy. Unfortunately, not going to be fighting until late in the game. One thing I do want to check if Easily is running breaching charges or not on his IQ. I'd imagine so. There you go. Yeah. And he is, he's already been using them, so there you go. Slash will get one more on my man, so that's now the castle removed. And uh, that that was a bit of a fail there on the goo mine, as wanted to go for the call, so it's okay. Should be able to pick it right back up. And Vertical is just watching for any potential rotates. This is really uh, 
taking time away from Rogue as they are not able to destroy the wall just yet. They need to get the clear here on Yeti before moving in. Yeah, he's definitely slowing things down as there's only 48 seconds left to do that, but they do have man advantage big time. Yeah, easily with one more Yeti will finally be destroyed and taken out of play. Maybe this will mean the wall will finally get Attackers. opened up here oh by our Thermite. And uh, Sofia is already inside it, just coming in and out here, shuttle the printer room just in case. And, well, really minimum to put pressure on his opponent. I always have to worry about the Sofia in here as he peeks very closely through by the pre open hole by the defense. There's one player, actually two, right next to him. So he'll try to impact the wall. No, the shotgun is already in and trying to destroy it. Brian will take damage and will drop to the floor. And they're right in front of one another as Acid will find the headshot. The fuser has already been set. Acid will find one more as two players will try to converge. And Shuttle will have one more angle on him. Acid all on his own here. And third person view is like playing a strategy game. They'll peek in against Eclipse, flashes right behind him. He drops one, but can he go for the five man? Oh man, that's four players now on the floor and taken out Shuttle. The last man alive here on the Zofia, 1v1, but the hatch is open. Should be an easy cleanup, and there you go, Shuttle. Taking down Acid, my man, Tomas, almost, almost getting that uh, round there. Watching him in, uh, in that third person top yeah. down was pretty darn interesting. It's like. Hmm. The dance around the cubicles. It's like playing an, like an isometric game back in the day, and you're like, okay, I'm going to click. It's like one of those old school RPGs, right? Click on a square, essentially. Yeah. Or a hex, depending <laughs> on which one you're playing. He rolled the dice and definitely went out on four of those. Yeah. Well, you saw, though, once we finally switched back to him, he had basically zero health left. There must have been about one HP at that point. So it didn't really matter how many shots from him yeah. hit him. But it, it was a potential comeback. But really, the big problem is the setup from Orglis just was not working well. And Rogue were able to find them one by one. Attackers need to well, it's interesting that they know that CCTV they being a possibility again, they are going to bring back the Maverick. But they're still going to keep the Zofia. This time, easily going to take up the Zofia role so that uh, they still have it without Shuttle having to take that. So he can still play the Maverick role. It's interesting the that they're making some adaptations. So as I mentioned earlier, they are a team that doesn't change too often on their attacks. But whenever they see an opportunity and something they could do better, they're definitely going to do it. In this case, it seems like they've figured out something they want to do or at least want easily to do. So we'll see if they will be as well coordinated on stack as they have won it once and lost it once. So they've been 50-50 so far in this attack. But it did come down to a bit of a mad scramble last time, and Orglis just barely winning it out just due to a few one gunfights towards the end and pressure. So if Rogue is efficient on time this time and manages to either push people back down to the basement quickly or even get some kills on Crazy again, then uh, maybe it'll work out a little bit better. I mean, last time we saw Yeti be able to escape back to site. This time he's playing a different operator. He's going to be playing on the dock. Does that mean he's going to be rotating back down later and just kind of healing himself back up after he can get away with what he can? Hard to say. Because he's been playing Legion pretty consistently so far. All right, here at the setup, you already saw that the uh, shotguns were being used to set up by the Teller's area. The Valkyrie will get spotted here, of course, as Crazy was setting up earlier on. And Jack will just keep in a beat on him on the opposite end of the map. And Yeti, though, will find one on Eclipse. Uh, it was a peak, so Eclipse will go down. Yeti having support as well near him here. With crazy, and they kind of use that to like, hey, he's here. You're baited. Sorry, you're dead. Yeti finds it, and he just Goes back upstairs, vertical. Just gonna try to find him as he gets up close to oh. the dock and should be an easy kill here. No, he's on the opposite end of the wall. Should hear oh, him here, I... and there you go. He punches in, but vertical's ready. And he gets the kill on Yeti, huge here for vertical. Taking down the dock, at least trying to equalize things, but you know, still losing the Dokabi is a pretty darn big loss on the attack. At least the Maverick is still alive and can be used. Luckily, above but... all else. Yeah. The hard breachers must be defended. They also have uh, backup smokes as well, on uh, I would imagine on the jackals. So at least they're not out smokes completely with the clips dying. So you haven't lost any vital utilities you mentioned with the hard breachers or the smokes. So they're still in a good position, but at the same time, vertical is not going for any kind of reset. It looks so he's just going to be trying to play this with low health, which means he's going to be kind of holding angles and coverage. And they're still trying to find crazy here so he is completely wasting time with easily and unfortunately for easily missing those shots means now Swapping he knows exactly where to watch for yeah, 
vertical now coming in from the opposite end by the stairs just to try and shut down any rotations and try to pinch away the Valkyrie. A final check here and they'll spot the Valkyrie who has gone back up. My man with one and there you go, the Valk is able to take down Vert. Shuttle comes in and finds the kill on Crazy. It's a 3v2 advantage for the defense at Orglis. Both Heart Breachers, the only people left alive now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very important to keep the Heart Breachers alive, but maybe somebody else as well. <laughs> yeah, not to the exclusion of others. My man, up close. You know he's in here, but Shuttle unfortunately has no extra manpower to help him in this offensive. And of course, my man can just flexibly destroy whatever he wants in here. He should find the angle on him. No, the smoke, the flash, everything being thrown into him. He flashes himself, yet Slash is still able to get the kill on my man. Brian will check in and throw his last last smoke canister. Brian with one, Acid with the second, and Rogue just completely faltering here against uh, Orglis, who played pretty efficiently here on the Rome game. Is something that we were kind of unsure about in the very first one when it was tried, but the bait and switch was beautiful. Well, now the problem for Orglis, though, is the only bomb site they've been able to successfully win is CCTV. And, well, they're forced to switch off of it every time they do. They will not get another chance to play it. Yep, that is very true. That is, of course, the last round of this first half. So there's a very good chance if things go as they have been so far that we'll see Rogue come out into the switch with a 4-2 lead. But worst case scenario, it ends up 3-3. Although I would imagine uh, they will do what they can to avoid that. Easily going to be dropping off that Sophia as it didn't do enough for them Defenders, last round. And Shuttle actually going to be picking attackers. up Buck, a role he is also very good at. But definitely something different. And this is going to really allow them to open up a lot of the floor because between the ITA on Vertical's Jackal, Buck's by Skeleton attackers. Key, and then the Breach Charges that Easley is bringing, they're going to have more than enough floor destruction to open up whatever they need to. And then, of course, plenty of smokes as well as a hard breacher. So they have a lot of utility to get in here and do some damage. It might just be up to the roamers to really stop that if they yep. can play far enough off site. But hey, if you can get an early pick on vertical, now you've got a lot more mobility on roam, but you still got to worry about yeah, Eclipse's like phone calls. Very true here. I see Brian destroying uh, the wall, at least the half of it. Um, you really want to make the, um, the, the potential for the sliding into the site more complicated for the attackers, which is what happened before when you saw Slash just you know sliding in and eventually getting the kill on the smoke in a position where 100% he should not have won that engagement. So you just just this is one of the only times where hey you should probably just destroy on torso level of the wall and not the. Leg level, which I usually am very much behind, but Shuttle will find the very first Ooh, one here on Yeti. That's an important start, because Yeti's been able to survive uh, a little bit longer than Rogue would like a lot of the times these rounds have been a bit of a problem for him. So that is that is going to be a big impact, I imagine, as, it, of course, that's also a dock off the board without getting a chance to use the spin pistols or do any damage really to Rogue at all. And there's now, of course, a phone as well to pick up. Shuttle, unfortunately, took his kill and left. So at least he managed to do his damage before he's gone. I imagine hopefully we'll be back soon. Hopefully not an internet problem that causes him to be out for long. But of course we will rehost if necessary. Yeah, and of course we can't. We won't rehost this round no. as you know we're already gone through. He's and back. he has returned. So just small disconnect, no problemo. He has done the work. At least it's a trade, right? The thermite is yep. uh, opening up the wall and we'll get it done. Well, we'll see if Vertical can manage to get through the janitor closet a little more safely this time. Which wall did he actually open? Let's see. Oh, there we go. Phone call coming out as well as Jackal tracking on Legion. So Legion's going to have double duty to deal with here. But at least he's going to be able to guard himself a little bit with goo mines. But my man, next to fall from Eclipse. Yeah, they know that there's one in here uh, in the elevator, but is able to drop through the hatch that was pre-opened. And you'll see Crazy sending up on the side. 3v4 as Eclipse is taking a decent chunk of damage here. But the call from the Dokabi will reveal Asset's position. And uh, because he's you know underneath and there's no uh, destroyed floor, it's very difficult to hear the call correctly. So relying on the Jackal uh, is a better thing to do. And this is why breaching charges on the IQ is much better on this. It just allows you more flexibility. Uh, even with three breaching charges, you can actually do quite a bit of work. And you can analyze this from the 8-meter range, but Acid is ready and he gets one. 
The drone is going to get shot down as it does turn into a 3v3. 35 seconds on the clock. It seems like at this point in time in every single round, things kind of tend to change very quickly. Easily to get one, but asset to refrag very quickly here. 2v2. It's the advantage in health, at least in Orglis's hands. Still have shotgun shells and one single remote gas canister here for Brian. A toxic babe might just be might just to get used here. Oh no, it's not gonna hit. It's on the printer and Eclipse will find the kill. Brian will go down. Acid can protect this from above. It's able to play the same way that we saw before. The diffuser has to go down and that is up to Slash Eclipse. We'll have to defend him. As Acid will try to rotate in softball with no impact grenades to use, which is very unfortunate for him. Smokes will slow him down, and there's no rotation hole on the opposite end. Unfortunate, a bit of a misplay here from Orglis as Acid will walk on in, get damaged, and Eclipse will finish him off as looked like an almost return here for Orglis, but Rogue is ready to clap, and they do indeed finish off the last player and get her done. Well, it just... The time management there from Acid did not work out. He almost got into a position where he was going to be able to stop that diffuser, but the hesitation in going through the uh, scanner there definitely cost him a bit of time. That there was no rotation hole on the other side as well, so he couldn't yeah. really use another angle to peek through. No, it was a case where there, he was trying to decide what to do, and, and just the hesitation cost him. But also the smoke was a nice, smart play there in the last second. Once he got the diffuser down, smoking right there pretty much put him in a tough spot. And like you said, a lack of rotation hole meant pretty much he was choke pointing through there. Slash kind of teasing uh, that he's going to bring out the Foster. Of course, it's more just going to make him wonder what he actually is going to play. Blackbeard, though, going to come out. Was banned in a previous matchup on Consulate there, but definitely going to be brought here by Yeti. Should be okay, interesting to see the first one of the day here. Acid going to be the one to take up the Maverick Mantle. I do think Acid had uh, somewhat better plays on Legion than Yeti was able to pull off to an extent. But at the same time, both of them seem to have very different play styles of uh, being able to uh, kind of play against the way that Rogue are attacking. We'll see. Eclipse are going to be picking up the pulse, something he's been doing more and more over time. We'll see how well... I, I, I got to wonder if uh, they're going to have Vertical on the roam, just because Vertical's such a good yeah, roamer, and go. Jackal... Or not Jackal, but uh, Jaeger is a good roam operator. But uh, Five seconds we'll to see. Insertion. He's a good operator in general, really oh, very yeah. flexible. You can you can do with the Jaeger whatever you really need. And here, they're just going to be watching in the tunnel. Just in case. I mean, the tunnel actually has been fairly underused. It is, it is well. To be fair, it is kind of a problematic area in that you are kind of restricting yourself and your ability to rotate if you decide to come from a different way costs you a ton of time as an attacker. So it's it's an all or nothing kind of commitment a lot of times. It becomes very problematic, especially if they have something like you know lesion to throw goo mines in there and other yep. things like that to be able to kind of really make it obvious you're coming from there. They kind of have the time advantage in waiting you out. Now we'll Acid on the Maverick moving on in here, taking control of the open area. Spot some reinforced sidewall, but that is no problem for the Acidic Man. It's uh, Slash actually waiting in here with you. And He's always ADS one playing the stairs. Yeah, and really, it's, it's a pretty good spawn. Now there's uh, still a second ADS here to catch extra utility. Uh, contrast here, Crazy is running the Claymore instead of the breathing charges that we saw Rogue running on their IEQ. I like the, the uh, use of holding an angle just in case Slash wanted to come out and do something about that there might breach charge. He's uh, interestingly playing though, is that, I mean it doesn't look like that's the shotgun that he's using right there, or is it? That is the shotgun. Okay, it's hard to see most of it with that big side dot. I mean there's, you know, M5901. There you go, that's a little below my <laughs> desk view here. Right, well, Vertical still looking on in. Slash is waiting, and sometimes you'll see a um, a shield being put in front of the player in the stairs. I mean, it tends to slow them down to an extent, mm -hmm. but uh, if they have the right soft structure, it's usually not too hard to take out. Yeah, the, the best way to really deal with it is open up the hatch and try to play from below. Some teams will also, rarely, but will happen, run through the tunnel, and there you go, the second ADS has not been spotted. My man, though, will find it and Slash unable to deal with the quick pre-fire peak. My man, and here to clean up the servers. Is there anybody in the back? Brian's gonna go and drone in. Very smart here. Instead of just immediately chucking in the grenade, they'll have a teammate droning them out. Yeah, I mean, if you've gotten this far and still have 45 seconds left, why waste the grenade that you could potentially use elsewhere? 
It's just all about conservation and this is what I love, the late round rotation. Usually if it's a Habana that does this, uh, but obviously because Habana is not available, she, we're going to see the Blackbeard doing this. He'll have to deal with the Yokai of Easily and the Echo in general. Uh, Brian and my man taking a bit of damage here and the Echo oh. actually peeks and wins it easily. Mom. Wow, that was beautiful there. Vertical will get one on Acid in the meantime. My man taking quite a bit of damage as well here on his sledge. They'll run right through the smoke and my man solo and health pick up the diffuser easily with a quick finisher at the end. And beautiful plays here by easily grab the 3k2 of the MP5. They all line up for him here. And of course, the second, well, the third player, the last one. And quick finisher with the bearing nine, which is actually an SMG that has seen quite a bit less play. Compared to back in the day after the nerf, PT29 gang represent. I mean, you could say that about the SMG12 too, but that doesn't seem to have stopped the clips. Yeah, I mean, there's rare players. Like, for example, if if you take a look at mm, Wilkie, for example, he's one of the players that even from the start has been talking and promoting the use of CZ75, yeah. and it works out pretty okay for him as well. But you could see definitely the struggles with the SMG-12. The best oh, yeah. example was when Eclipse was shooting the door Attackers from the uh, lobby of the bank into the hallway. And it just bounced. And it just, just, I mean, he managed to get the door, but it kicked all over the place to the point where he wasn't even hitting the door by the end of the clip. So it's definitely a struggle Attackers to control. But hey, if you can manage it, it is a good operator to be able to run fairly consistently, and it definitely worked out for them during a lot of those attacker rounds. So we'll see. Shuttle's going to be the one to bring out the lesion here. Should be interesting as they are going to be on Tellers. Vertical on Doc. Should be fun. Yet he's going to try the Blackbeard yet again. This time the Blackbeard's going to be potentially useful through the lobby windows if he wants to try and Ten catch anyone. Flash. Doing anything cheeky or trying to peek the doorway from the uh, Teller side over towards the front of the lobby. Let's see if anyone wants to risk their neck Ten like that as he will be able diffuser. to watch that a Attackers lot more safely. The There's the, the door there. Thanks for uh, highlighting that, Marcio. But that is one castle barricaded up, so no one's going to be peeking that anytime soon. But of course, the disadvantage is if they are trying to thermite that wall, it becomes a little bit harder to deal with it outside of impact nades, which of course you can use to impact trick it. Or if you really mm -hmm. want to get crazy, just impact your own castle door and run out to get them. And it, a lot of players will keep one impact grenade just in case, because you know you, you instantly can can peek through just with the way that impacts function. Of course, instead of you know just having to take down the castle walls uh, one by one, it manually takes a second and a half or so. It's <gasps> not super efficient still. Yeti running in with the Mark 17. Uh, a lot of players really have a big pick between the Mark 17 or the SR25. And I'll see the kill Brian, the Thermite. He's been knocked off of uh, Orglis. That is the only hard breacher available for Orglis. That is definitely not a good position to be in. Well, that really funnels the rest of the attackers. Now hmm. the defenders can just kind of play a lot smarter and a lot more passive. It's not as much that the, the attackers can even do about it. Yeah, it is still okay. It's not the end of the world. But you'd still like to have that for might just have an angle. Now the Blackbeard will get picked here and they know where he's at. And Acid will win out the fight against Vertical and make it a 4v4. At least Vertical managed to get one kill first. Shed a little bit low on health and there is someone directly to his left. Oh, the peak pre-fired by Crazy here, but the C4 from Slash will take him down and then drop all the way down, easily finding the body shots on Yeti. Really, the only realistic way of taking out the Blackbeard efficiently. Now this leaves my man in acid, last two alive versus the three here of Rogue. And Eclipse scanning in. There is no hard breach available. And you can do whatever you want with those EMPs, but you know, time is the only thing that you really have to your advantage in this situation if you're Orgless. Yeah, at this point, those EMPs are just best at taking out the mute jammers if there's any left to deal with. So you could try and get some drones in, maybe set some up like um, Acid's trying to do there. I could imagine could call out. Or no, he doesn't need to call, he's the Thatcher, but. <laughs> Call it to himself. Please, Thatcher, this. But oh, the, oh, no. the double drop. <laughs> what is that? Shotgun in the face, <laughs> and Slash will finish them off. <laughs> I love the synchronized drop, but it certainly didn't work. Whoops. This. <laughs> Hold on, let me switch guns real quick. I'll be right back. There, there you go. go. It just needs a bit more ammo. I mean, I, I appreciate you tried to push him, but you're not a three speed, and it's just. And that wasn't uh, a great opportunity there, and Slash was absolutely on top of it. He did see both of them. So. I mean, you mentioned the three-speed thing, but I'd like to remind people, like, three-speeds are not as fast as they were before. No, not as fast as they used to be. It's, it still makes a difference. Yeah. And sometimes in 
moments like that, it could have been a significant difference. Yeah. Because Flash took a while to switch and come back. But yeah, you're right. They absolutely are not. They're around 10% slower than what they were in the past. And one speeds are about 10% faster than they were in the past. Kind of two speeds are just there. Yeah. They're just there. They just exist. <laughs> They're so, perfectly balanced. They're a 2-2, two, two, right? Exactly. Why isn't everyone two-speed? Which means Lion balanced. is exactly balanced because he's two. Okay. That must be, all right. I'm so happy that Lion uh, is quarantined. You should have made bands more locate, interesting. And Honestly, I remember can. when we were in Rio and watching the uh, the eSports e panel mm -hmm. with uh, Pio and Justin and Carrie. And really, when, when we heard, oh, Lion is now quarantined, which means he's not going to be played in Pro League anymore. Does it mean we heard the crowd roar? <laughs> <laughs> you could hear Is the roar of all the casters from every single region crying, basically. Just clapping and crying and yelling, like, finally! Like a thousand it's voices done. It was beautiful. Well, you, you, you saw something uh, pretty interesting there, Tevin, didn't you? Yeah. Easily. That was is five playing the clash. Yeah, that's definitely going to be uh, interesting, especially for this bomb site. Now, this is a bomb site that Orglis wouldn't bomb, touch, oddly user. enough. This Attack is the one they did want to play. They to chose to play open instead. Rogue actually being uh, one of the teams to really push this heavy outside of what were flip side at the time. Uh, it's definitely worked out somewhat well for them compared to, especially open, the other site that they tried to kind of experiment on. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise to see them playing this for what is quite likely the final round of this matchup. So far, I mean, we've had 7-2, seven 7-3, seven and maybe another 7-2. Yeah, it's definitely, again, the uh, the wisdom of the crowd seems to be working out in terms of uh, favoritism. It should it should be a 7-2 based off the way the community vote. Attackers have dropped the bomb. All right, well, Acid will walk on in and user. find that the two walls here are battered, batteried, and my man will have to move out. Uh, shuttle running with the Iron Side MP7. A lot of people were asking, well, at least every now and then you'll see a post on Reddit. It's like, why Iron Sides? Well, they're fairly clear. Vertical will find crazy. So the ACOG working out here. AQ out of play, and Vertical will bring himself back up to 100% health. Just peeking in, and yeah, you have the Clash in the back that's easy to play with. Eclipse from the side will get another one here in the UMP. My man, though, from the side will get one. Brian. Attackers Only one with Slash. Bomb. My man going down a vertical. Shuttle taking a lot of damage as well. Yeti just peeking in, but again, that's the Blackbeard. If he gets the kill on the window, that's all right. There's still the Clash available, and the Clash is pretty darn powerful, especially when it's being played as a tank. It's like a much more mobile and effective Blackbeard. The Clash will bomb finally go down. I'm not sure how, how the Clash died, in the, or at least was down. But Yeti will have to walk back in, and he finds the headshot on Vertical. <laughs> Though he spots the Clash. No more Delta Shields to play with here. He's going to have to deal with two players, Eclipse and Easily. Another Flash, and unfortunately, that's not a grenade. You need to get right up into the Clash to kill her. And there you go. Eclipse will take him out just from the side. And Rogue will take round number one, number nine, and that is all that they needed. 7-2. That uh, that combo with Clash and Doc, because once Clash got down, Doc was just like, here, I got you. Now we're right back up, Blackwood High. Guess who's got a shield that doesn't break? Yep. So nicely done, great teamwork there at the end. The, the combo of the ACOG behind the shield is just, yeah, you can't switch, quick switch with the shield anymore, but you don't need to when you've got a smart Doc player. So just, I mean, we're seeing Rogue definitely playing top of their form, though. They yep. may, have ha may have had a few rounds where they lost CCTV attacks. They definitely seem to struggle quite a bit against some of the roam plays being made. But overall, very efficient attack, and that's why you see 7-2 scoreline.